The vehicle's exploded in the street, sir. Jerusalem has long been the focal point of the still unsolved problem of Palestine. The King David Hotel itself. It was in the wing on the right of the picture that the terrorists placed their explosive. And the result of the crime, the tragic scene, is like a serious incident during the Blitz. The hotel housed the British Army headquarters and the Palestine government offices, and casualties were very heavy. 65 deaths are reported, and there is little or no hope of survival for any of the 58 missing. Nearly 50 others were injured. The Jewish terrorist organization, Irgun Zwei Leomi, openly admitted responsibility for the bombing. Many arrests have been made. In the great synagogue at Tel Aviv, the stolen uniforms of many British regiments and bales of forged bearer bonds of the Palestine government have been discovered, in addition to a portable radio transmitter and quantities of illegal weapons and explosives. All this came to light when a false wall in the synagogue was found. The Jewish temple keeper was placed under arrest. 200,000 Jews are being checked by two divisions of British troops and Palestine police. 25,000 people are being interrogated each day. Our troops, in sternly guarded surroundings, are looking for members of the notorious Irgun Sfailiome and the Stern Gang, suspected of blowing up the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. President Truman, condemning the wanton act of terrorism, added that America and Britain are conferring on steps to be taken to implement the report of the Anglo-American Palestine Committee. Undoubtedly, the people of Britain anxiously wait for the announcement of a policy which will prevent the loss of any more innocent lives. Sir John Shaw, Chief Secretary with Sir Alan Cunningham, High Commissioner for Palestine, were present when the bomb exploded in the King David Hotel. They are taking strong action in rounding up all suspects of the outrage. Ramley Cemetery. The 13 British soldiers killed were buried here with Mr. Kennedy, the Postmaster General. 
the cortege went under armed escort from Jerusalem to Ramleh by road. Bearer parties came from the 6th Airborne Division. Of the victims, Sir John Shaw said, their only crime was their devoted, unselfish and impartial service to Palestine and its peoples. They have been rewarded by cold-blooded mass murder. I shall mourn them as long as I live. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's wonderful to see you, friends, fellow Brits, fellow Zionists. And what a wonderful sight it always is to see the flag of the State of Israel uh, flying so proudly here in the centre of London, as it should. We have every right to feel proud of that flag. Uh, you have every right uh, to fly it here and to fly it proudly, because we know that the cause that we have is proud. I have fought many times for my country, but it embarrasses me to find out the way that Great Britain is stabbing its ally, its close ally, Israel, in the back at the behest of a lame duck president of the United States. We have in the past betrayed the Jewish people in Palestine and the State of Israel. We betrayed them when we refused to allow so many of them into Palestine, into the future Jewish state, uh, around about during the Second World War and immediately afterwards. That was a gross and disgraceful betrayal by our country of the State of Israel. And yet we had played such a big role in bringing about the State of Israel when under that man there, King George V, we brought into being the Balfour Declaration, which was the fundamental beginning of the modern day State of Israel. Yet we at the same time refused to countenance the formation of that state in 1948 and indeed a British general led the Arab Legion in its attack on the new state of Israel in 1948. So now we must behave far more properly in the 21st century. Just over there, in the bit of grass just over there, the other side of the House of Lords, we're going to build a Holocaust memorial under that grass which is fan a fantastic project and it's designed to remind us about the terrors of the Holocaust, Holocaust and why it can't and shouldn't happen again. But I think not, not only do we need to um, take a harder line and not appease them in the way of, of accusing Israel of things that Israel hasn't done when we should be accusing your enemies of things you've done, not appease them in the way of, of accusing Israel of things that Israel hasn't done when we should be accusing your enemies of things you've done. Um, we should be taking a harder line in terms of we should go on to the offensive. We should challenge uh, and destroy this idea that there is a right of return of Palestinians, destroy the idea that, that there is a permanent refugee status for Palestinians. These are the sort of things, as well as some of the measures that Greg mentioned, that should be pursued, I think, in the international community. I was in Israel for both of the last two Gaza conflicts. Uh, I saw it firsthand. I saw firsthand what the IDF were doing, and I knew all about the IDF anyway. I'd worked closely. Israeli Defence Force. Uh, yes. The, the, sorry, Israeli yes. The, I'd worked with the Israeli Defence Force. I'd worked with Israeli intelligence, including Mossad. 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 Those people who are British citizens who, again, we can't get into court, we cannot prosecute, because we don't have evidence that's ad adequate for a court, but we do have intelligence, we consider interning them in the UK without trial.